Let's return now to our main news this evening. We're joined from Government Buildings by Taoiseach Brian Cowan. Taoiseach, thanks for talking to us on the programme. You told your parliamentary party this afternoon that you're not going anywhere. I think it's important to point out, first of all, that the government has to focus on recovery uh, for this economy. We have a four-year plan that has to be implemented and we have a parliamentary programme that has to be done with the finance bill to pass. We need stability and we need certainty in this country, particularly in the coming months ahead, to achieve that. We intend to do that. Secondly, I also said, as you say, in relation to the internal party uh, meeting that we had, uh, I think it's very important to point out that I'm making it clear I'm the democratically elected leader of the party. Um, there are issues which people are raising. I said I will deal with those concerns on the basis of a one-to-one -one discussion with colleagues uh, to assess what we believe to be in the best interests of the party in terms of pre preparation for the elections uh, and, and going forward. Okay. Uh, my intentions are as I've stated them, but I am democratically elected, I listen to the democratic wishes of the party and I will assess those myself. Right. It is within the entitlement of anyone in the party uh, to, to use the procedures that are there if they wish to have any matter raised other than by, by myself. Did you at any stage in the last couple of days consider resigning? No, I haven't considered resigning. I haven't said to anybody that I'm stepping down. Right. Uh, not at all. I'm very much focused on the job at hand. At any uh, that's stage my constitutional the duty and obligation. And the, at any stage in the last number of days, have any of your ministers come to you and said that you should consider your position? No, I have spoken to my ministers at front bench level, uh, and indeed some individually, and we've had a chat about the political situation and, and how we prepare, etc., and go forward. But those views are uh, discussions we have ourselves internally. Right, but have they touched on your leadership? There's been no one who has been uh, not showing confidence in my leadership. Uh, what there have been, of course, has been discussions uh, about the present situation, preparing for the election. As we know, there will be an election in the spring after we complete the finance bill. I went to the parliamentary party meeting today to make it quite clear uh, that we have a, a sitting leader of the party as teaching of this country. We have a job to do. We have to focus on that job, and I will resolve uh, any issues that were being raised today uh, quickly. All right. and as you said, if somebody wants to see a change, there are procedures. The first step in those procedures is to put down a, a confidence motion in you. You need, I think, is it 18 signatures of members of the Parliamentary Party to do that. If, uh, uh, if somebody were to assemble those 18 signatures and were to put down a confidence motion, would you resist? Would you fight? Would you fight on? Well, I've, I've made the point, you know, very clearly to uh, Brian, we have procedures in the party which are democratic. But I'm also making the point that I very much recognise the concerns uh, that there are within the organisation regarding uh, the future, regarding the electoral prospects, regarding the election. Uh, and it's my duty as leader uh, to gauge uh, the issues that are that people are worried about, yeah. that people are dealing with, and for me to make my assessment in the best interest of the party. So and what's the, the answer then to the question, would you, would you seek uh, to contest a confidence motion if it comes to that? Would you? Well, obviously, uh, if, if any such motion were put down, that would be a matter for the party to consider, and I'd be the leader of the party while that's being considered. But it's a matter for you but to the consider point as I'm well. Making, the point uh, I'm making uh, is, the important, sorry, if I may, the important point I'm making to you is this. I am now engaged in an internal discussion with my own parliamentary colleagues. Uh, and when I complete that, uh, I'll give you the assessment uh, that I have about where we're going from here. In relation to Fianna Fáil TDs now, as you embark on this process of, of consultation with them, what can you say to them? What persuade, how can you persuade them that you as leader can lift them up from the sort of 14% rating that we've seen in the opinion polls in an election campaign, that you're the best person uh, to have the, the face on the poster to lead them into that campaign? Well, obviously, I'm having a discussion with colleagues about these matters, and until that's completed, um, you know, I can't say to you beyond that where, what the situation will be, only that, as leader of the party, I will sit down with them in an atmosphere of mutual respect uh, and solidarity and decide what I believe to be the collective view of the party. Uh, and that's my job, uh, because if concerns are raised, I'll address them. I'll, I'll do that swiftly and uh, quickly over the next uh, 24 hours or so and I will take it from there. But see, as I say, we have democratic you, processes that are available. You see, the, the, the people who are opposed to you, the people who per perhaps you know, appreciate uh, uh, your, 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 your various qualities, but just have lost faith in you as a leader, say that almost anybody else leading them into the campaign would be better than Brian Cowan. Now, I think, you see, we don't run this organisation on the basis of, with respect to what people say in the media, uh, exclusively, or indeed, we have to listen to what you have to say. Obviously, yeah, but this is—I'm no, talking here about members but, of but, your own but, party, Mr. Cowan. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me let me answer that. Let me answer that. 
What I say is this, this, this party in government, working with colleagues in government, have dealt with a crisis of huge proportions uh, since we took office. And we have done the right thing by the country all the time. It hasn't met with popular support, obviously, because it has meant very difficult decisions that's impacting on households uh, in every town and in town and city in the country. But it is the way forward. We intend to get through this crisis. We have now seen growth return. We've seen exports up. We have to maintain this uh, process of adjustment. It's the only way in which we can go forward. And we have a four-year plan in place, okay. which was drawn up by the right. Irish government, 95 percent of it, right. and we have to stick to that path. Okay. Now, well, what, I'm saying is, what I'm saying is we have a real plan. The, the government has a plan. Others have empty promises. Right. We have I, a plan. And we can and what we have I'm to sure do is sit down and decide come, what's in our best right. political interest. Right. I'm sure that can forward. be argued come Election Day. I mean, this latest crisis in relation to the issue has been triggered by the disclosure of these hitherto undisclosed meetings and contacts that you had with Sean Fitzpatrick. Should, should, should they not all have been laid out at a much earlier stage? Should there not have been completeness and frankness uh, and complete openness about your contacts with Mr Fitzpatrick and other senior figures in Anglo-Irish rather than having it dragged out of you over the last number of days and no, produced the newspaper accept. reports and so forth. I don't accept that. First of all, I say, I say this to you, that if the full support of the Parliamentary Party, who accept fully uh, that everything that I did in respect of uh, contacts in relation to these areas were totally above board and appropriate, and that I referred matters to the appropriate authorities uh, when contact was made. Secondly, uh, I want to, also want to make the case that the political charge that continues to be made and the political narrative uh, against me and against the Fianna Fáil Party is totally without foundation. Uh, and thirdly, I want to say that we have always sought to do what was right by the country, but in the common good, in the national interest, and we are not beholden to any personal interest, as is so, the, the long-striven narrative of many who try so to suggest why not tell it. People no, about the, so why, if that's the case, why not tell people about all of this uh, long ago, at a much earlier stage, so as it's all out but there and I people was, know exactly what sort of contacts you had with, uh, with these figures? Because... Because, listen, there was nothing relevant in, in relation to any of those, a, a game of golf, there was nothing relevant in relation to that, in relation to my, the charge of my public duties, in relation to a phone call I got in March, I referred it to the central bank governor. That's, that's all that was involved in that. But what is but, sought to be who, established who by the opposition... who decides what's relevant, Mr Cowan? Is it not up for people to, to have the facts laid before them and make the decisions themselves? And your own colleagues, indeed. But what's, but, yes, but, what's, but what's, sought, what's being sought to be established which has no basis in fact, is that something inappropriate was done by me uh, in the course of my duties as Minister of Finance. I'm not Nothing suggesting that, I'm just saying, why didn't you lay out clearly the extent of your contacts with Sean Fitzpatrick at a much, much earlier stage, rather than having the thing... Uh, it, I mean, if you look, well, at, the, for example, if you look for example, at the, the Gary McGann um, uh, contacts mm. you had, a director of Anglo-Irish Bank, mm. that was finally revealed by you yesterday after an hour of answer, answering questions about these matters in the Doyle. But in, but in relation to these matters, I mean, that was about a situation where people joined us for a lunch, right? And there was no discussion about Anglo-Irish Bank at that lunch. It was, it was no discussion whatever. It was a more general discussion about the economy. We'd just come, uh, finished our parliamentary session, uh, and I was sitting down with people at that talking about the economy, how we could bring forward some job initiatives, what we were going to do in terms of the slowdown of the economy. And that's been confirmed by people who attended it. There's no one suggesting by anybody. No one is suggesting that I did anything wrong. But you're at this stage not even to able to say matters. whether this is the extent of the dealings that you, you had with Sean Fitzpatrick. You said you believe you didn't have any I'm more, but you can't be sure. Well, I'm sorry. I don't. Well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm saying from facts within my own knowledge, I didn't have any other dealings uh, from facts within my... I, I mean, there's no issue about it here. I didn't meet uh, or see Sean Fitzpatrick since, since that time. Uh, and, and to suggest that I, I, I have been in any way... Uh, in, involved in something nefarious or wrong is totally wrong. People are, are seeking to draw a conclusion for which there is no evidence in fact. In other words, is there any suggestion or any evidence produced that I did anything uh, wrong? I didn't, because I didn't do it. That's not the way I operate. Right, Throughout my time in politics, there. I've sought to do the very best by the country, uh, doing my job conscientiously. There are people who can be open to criticism on, on a whole range of things. But I'll tell you one thing, I never did anything, nor am I beholden to anybody right. throughout my public life. At least I, have, I intend, however long I'm in public life, to keep that good name anyway. All right, there we'll leave it. Uh, Tisha, thanks for talking to us.